Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My name is Rainy World. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips. And we back for another vlog, y'all. All right, check it. So I have a very special trips episode for you today. That's right, I am headed to the Butterfly Palicia. Oh, God, y'all, check this out. We're gonna turn this vlog into a drinking game. Now, every time I mispronounce the word peninsula, take a shot, okay, take a shot. Now, if you do that, if you do that, do my favor. Go ahead and get your phone, okay? Down nine and one and have that other one on standby because you're gonna need it. I'm telling you right now Take a shot every time I do it. I don't know what it is something about my mind and my lips Don't allow me to say that word, you know quickly. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I'd be like yo, man I'm on my way to Butterford. Butterford where? Butterford Pelosi. Huh? What? No, 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 I'm, I'm tripping. No, nah, I mean, I'm going to um, you know, Butterford, you know, Butterford placenta no, penicillin <sighs> Take a shot, take a shot. So yeah, man, I'm headed to Bellevue. I have like six spots that I'm trying to go to to kind of check out the area and peep the scene. So enjoy the ride, enjoy the trip. Let's go, let's get it. Have a good day. Hey, he's got me looking quite beige. Got me deep in the haze. There's no more compassion. All right, y'all, so we have arrived, we have arrived. All right, so in order to get to the Bolivar Peninsula, we have to cross the water, and we're gonna do so by the Galveston Bolivar Ferry System. Now, the interesting thing about the ferry system, I believe they have three ferries that run constantly 24 hours a day. Well, overnight, they have one ferry that runs once every particular hour. Now, to get on the ferry, it's actually free. It's actually free, and this is part of the Texas Department of Transportation, aka TexDOT. Well, it ain't really free then, because, you know, we pay taxes, y'all, so yeah we, we pay for this trip now each particular boat can hold approximately 70 vehicles and 500 people it just seems kind of odd that a boat can carry 70 vehicles and still float but you know cargo ships have way more weight so yeah we're going to check out the ferry and see the um in and outs of how it works and everything let's hope we make it to the other side i'm just looking for the lifeboat and hopefully i get a spot by the lifeboat because if the boat goes down i'm the first one in that lifeboat don't care about women and kids it is what it is let go I'm aware of the bonds that were created today When you told me that sure there's a way The water's so still and my pain has gone away The air is much cleaner after it rains all right, so some pretty interesting facts about the ferry ride itself. Now, the link between Galveston and Bolivar is approximately a 2.7 mile sail. In addition, typical duration takes about 18 minutes to travel that 2.7 miles across the Galveston Bay. Now, they say that the average loading time is only nine minutes. How is that possible? How can they get 70 vehicles onto this boat in only nine minutes? y'all? I can't drive down I-10 in Houston for nine miles in 30 minutes. So I don't see how that's possible. I don't really see how that's possible, but very organized, very quick, and yeah, very smooth. So I trust it. And once again, where's that damn lifeboat? Oh, but when in doubt, check it out, check it out. Yeah. It just so happened that um, the person who parked next to me got that nice boat. So um, yeah, man. Um, Looks like I'll be evacuating in style because regardless if they know it or not, I'm going with them. Follow my love, accept it since spring air. Follow the moment of the sun. There's a call for new beginnings here, but the sorrow of yester disappear. Let your body. All right, y'all, so I have arrived to the next spot, which is the historic Bolivar Lighthouse. 
let's talk about it. Okay, so the original lighthouse was actually built in 1952. Now, what's interesting is that um, during the Civil War, the Confederate troops tore it down for iron to make cannonballs. The lighthouse was then rebuilt in 1872 and served as a beacon to travelers who kind of come across that channel with ships by candlelight for 61 years. It was in commission for 61 years before finally retiring in 1933. Now, some interesting things about the actual lighthouse itself. I don't know exactly when, but at some particular point, they took out the glass and the actual um, you know, light bulb from the top of it. Now, once that did happen, the lighthouse unfortunately started to deteriorate because you know, salt water kills everything now i did go to the website of um Bulliver to kind of see like what was going on in that situation as far as like the restoration of it and they actually are taking donations and the website does say that pretty much that um without its immediate repair and restoration Bulliver is in danger of losing this precious piece of history it's one of the you know last remaining lighthouses along the gulf coast in texas that i'm aware of now actually when i was on um, facebook i posted on the Bulliver fishing page like hey does anybody know the owner because you know i'm gonna be shooting a video i'm trying to get access into that lighthouse i'm trying to be all up in there you know what i'm saying y'all three days later do y'all know the owner of the property was like yo right now my name is mrs maxwell i own the property what y'all that was late last night i sent her a dm unfortunately we didn't have opportunity to link up, so I missed her. I missed her. So, Mrs. Maxwell, if you're happy to be watching this, um, hit me up. Hit me up. I would love to come back and get a closer look of the lighthouse itself, maybe the interior. You can tell me some more history about it. So, yeah, that is the classic Bulliver Lighthouse. Um, like I say, the website in which the lighthouse is featured on, they are accepting donations to try to, you know, keep it alive and restore it. I'll put the link below if you want to check that out and donate. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the structure itself is um, 177 feet tall. Okay. From there, I'm trying to think to my mind, how the hell did it get powered by candlelight? Like, how many candles did it take to, you know, power something so big? And it had to be expensive, you know what I'm saying? Because I know when I go to Walmart, one of those candles like this big is like $5. Like $5, you know what I'm saying? So how they got something 177 that's a lot of goddamn candles. That's a lot of candles, y'all. I don't know. So yeah, um, I think it's a beautiful piece of structure. Um, hopefully, hopefully um, they can restore it. I think like back in the day, it was like painted like white and black. And then, you know, it was this, you know, this big structure of, you know, Bulliver, you know what I'm saying? But it still stands in... You know, hopefully it does well. Now, also, also a little more interesting facts. Hold on, wait for me. Give me a second. Give me a second. Now, apparently, one of my Facebook friends by the name of Danny Absher. Sorry, sir. Now, oh, I'm sorry. And also, Jeffrey Robinson was having a conversation. So apparently, they said that some movie called Sweet Charlie was shot here, um, starring Patty Duke. Now, two things, y'all. Never seen the movie called Sweet Charlie, and I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't know who Patty Duke is. Don't get mad at me. Do you know who Slim Doug is? Hmm. Huh? You know who Sim Doug is? Hmm? You know who Paul Wall is? Hmm? See? Y'all don't know everybody either. But apparently a movie was shot here, so I might have to look that up and see what that's about. But yeah, so um, that is the classic, historic Butterfield Lighthouse. I hope y'all love it, man. It's a beautiful spot. And yeah, make sure to check the link below if you want some more information about it. You got me acting out You Oh, tenderness is out the window what you do to me when the cold bites blue is straight cold mm -hmm. Oh, it has to be you leaving writings on the wall Promise me roses and a hungry haze But now there's only
All right, y'all, so we have arrived at the next location, Fort Travis. Um, I've drove past here before, but I never actually, you know, been here before. And what's crazy is it actually looks like it has like the original forts or forts, you know, here. The only forts I ever experienced was as a kid um, and with the ones where I built as a pillow and I would keep people out. Now, I'm the only child, so only people I was keeping out was my imaginary friends. That's not the point. Stay focused, y'all. All right, so let's talk about this particular area of Fort Travis. Now, it says that the Republic of Texas first installed fortifications at the site in 1836 as a means of marine defense and named the site after William Barrett Travis, okay? They say he was also the commander of the Alamo, word? That's crazy. All right, now it does say that um, Confederate and later Union forces also fortified the area through remnants of the structures which no longer remain, okay? Now it says construction on the present fort, Travis, began in 1898. It was completed in 1919, 1899 as a federal construction of Port Galveston commenced. During World War I, Fort Travis Gannis troops defending the Port of Galveston and the bays and channels that connect the Port of Gulf of Mexico. So yeah, man, um, this is like a legitimate fort. So I guess what they did was, you know, tear down the lighthouse, made some cannons from the melted metal, came here to the fort, to defend Port Bolivar. That's my theory. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no historian. I'm just a brother trying to make it, y'all. I'm just a brother trying to make it. So yeah, man, let's go check out the area and see what's going on and see if we can get into these forts. Oh yeah, people are going inside of them. Yeah, man, why don't I want to go inside of a fort? It's dark, it's creepy looking. See, black people don't do this stuff, man. Why am I continuing to do stuff we ain't supposed to be doing? Come on, let's go. Y'all, check this out, man. Look at this. Look at that. That's crazy. I don't know, man. I mean, they call it a fort in a bunker, but to me, this looks like prison. Right, that's just me. I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm going to call this Fort San Quentin. All right, so let's check this out. Got some stairs there. Got a gate, but can't get to it. So, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the original structure or whatnot. The hell chemical warfare service room the hell is chemical warfare they got torture rooms here yeah man this place would be so creepy at night like you know this place is haunted like you know it's haunted like to me it looks like a prison uh, look at this uh, look at this look at that you trying to tell me this ain't a jail the hell was that? Okay, I think it was a pigeon. But yeah, um, creepy AF. Creepy AF. I see like a sign. It's on the wall. That says shell storage room, powder storage room. That's so weird, man. Look at that. So that's where they kept the ammunition at. Hello. Hello. I don't know why I'm saying that, like, if something respond, I'm Audi, Audi 5000, mm -mm, in the vlog, we gone, nope. Alright, so this is battery 236 on the opposite side. Now, some more information, they said that in 1942, Fort Travis was enlarged and 2,500 troops were stationed in the fort's barracks. It says several anti-aircraft and anti-destroyer guns were installed in the reinforced concrete bunkers lining the continuous shipping channel. It says when World War II ended, Fort Travis was declared surplus property, dismantled, and in 1949 sold to private interests. Interesting. It's crazy. Look at that. Oh, this is like one of those little um, gun room installments. Make sure you know bees in here. So he says, come here. Right there. Close up rifle. Taking them out one at a time. One at a time. Pow, 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 pow. Pow, pow, pow. See, I would have had this job. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if I'm going to be in the military, 
military. The military, I want the job. I want to be in a room surrounded by concrete. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to be on the front line. No, I'm good here, sir. No, sir, no, 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 I'm good, no. No, no, I ain't leaving. No, I ain't leaving, no, no, no. I'm stationed here, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't want a promotion. No, I'm right here. Pew, pew, pew. I'm good. Yeah, we're chilling out here. Ladies in the rear, the feet in the water. The top disappears, drinking Malibu Patron. Or a beer in a cup. Do you remember the time, oh why, when we fell in love? Do you remember the time when we first... Oh, uh -uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. So yeah, I'm at the next spot, so check it. If you're coming to Bulliver, there's a high probability you're coming to fish. Yeah, because check it out. There's multiple places to fish in Bulliver. I don't got time to be showing y'all all the spots. This can't be an hour-long vlog, so I'm going to least show you one, all right? So I'm at the North Jetty. Let's talk about it. All right, so the North Jetty on the southern end of the Bulliver Peninsula shot <laughs> is one of the two built into the Gulf of Mexico to provide protection of the channel to the port of Galveston. Port of Texas City and the Port of Houston. It says work on the jetties began as a construction experiment in 1874. It says the major portion was completed only after Congress approved funds for work in 1890. Goddamn. You trying to tell me Congress was slow back then too? Some things has never changed, y'all. So it says the final completion of the system in 1898 made Galveston a deep sea port of the world commerce. That's pretty dope. All right, so all right, so let's go take a look quick at the North Jetty. Oh yeah, so I know I almost forgot. Look, check it. I have a vlog idea, okay? Now, on this particular jetty, it is long as AF, okay? But it goes two miles out to the point it reaches something called a boat cut. Pretty much there's jetty rocks, all of a sudden this opens up where boats can literally cut through it. Now, I have an idea that I wanted to try to hike out there one day and fish the boat cut. It's two miles away. That's four miles round trip. I have an HISD education, but that's four miles, okay? So look, if y'all wanna see me do a fish episode, Hiking out two miles out to fish the North Jetty boat cut. I'm gonna need 200 likes. 200 likes! There's a high probability I might not make it back. My life is not worth 100 likes, but it is worth 200 likes. Let's go. All right, come on. Let's All right, so at the beginning of the jetty, there's the North Jetty bait camp. Um, yeah, you can get bait here to get set up and everything. Um, shout out to the employee there, Andy, who gave me some 411. You know, apparently the bull reds are running. So yeah, if we come down here, now the jet itself, it starts off as a nice, safe looking sidewalk. However, the farther you go out, this is gonna turn to all rocks like that. So, like I said, um, two miles out, it goes to the boat cut. Even after the boat cut, I think it goes like another mile or two miles, it's crazy. It's like a four mile long jetty. So um, yeah, if y'all wanna see me fish that and walk out there, I'm gonna need 200 likes. All right, so there's a lot of people out here. It's a beautiful day, so I don't blame them. It feels good, it's, it's about 65, so you know, we gotta enjoy this because come summertime, it's gonna be 2,000 goddamn degrees. But yeah, let's go check out the jetty, get a couple of aerial shots and move on to the next location. Let's go, let's go. Alright, so we have arrived at the next location. So if fishing is not your thing, but chilling at the beach is, then guess what? Bolivar Palencia shot. 
is 27 miles of beachfront. 27 miles, y'all. Now, what's unique about, um, you know, the Peninsula and the Crystal Beach is with 27 miles of beach, there's a lot of space to go around for everyone, okay? Now, also, um, here in Texas, well, I don't know, all of Texas, but on this particular beach, you can drive on it. Now, in order to park, it does say that you have to get like a, a parking permit, but it's only like $15 for the year um, for the actual permit. I just don't know why do they call it Crystal Beats because, you know, anybody from Galveston know ain't nothing crystal about our water. Nothing crystal about our water. So I'm not understanding why they call it Crystal Beats. So I'm not sure, hold on, let's ask the local. Um, Ma'am, why do they call this Crystal Beach? What? what? Do I have some crystal meth? No, ma'am. Oh my God. Anyway, um, just have a look around. Um, take a look at the beach. Um, not my thing really, cause it's hot, it's sandy. If I'm on the beach, I'm trying to fish. You know what I'm saying? It's another good spot to do some surf fishing as well, as you'll see. And yeah, so let's take a little look around and see what's bobbing, yeah. I'm fanish. You know why I'm fanish? Yo, I have not eaten in 20 hours, but do you know why? It's been intentional because look, check it out. I knew I was coming here and I knew that I wanted to add a place to eat into this Bulliver Showcase vlog. So, you know, a while back I asked on the, you know, Bulliver Fishing page, like, yo, where did he eat? You know what I'm saying? I've been driving for like 10 minutes. Only thing I see is dead possums and skunk. Where the restaurants at? Um, the next to me. Bulliver doesn't have any like franchise with big box you know places there ain't no water burgers here ain't no popeyes ain't no mcdonald's they don't got starbucks they don't got walmart they don't got target i mean it's kind of hard to realize what is a restaurant because you can't tell if it's the bait shop or bulk storage because you know it's actually a restaurant so look i asked everybody else where do i need to eat at everybody stingrays I'm like who stingrays i'm like what stingrays i'm like all right so yeah i'm here at the stingray restaurant and marina apparently um you can pull up on a boat and take a meal to go that's pretty dope so yeah i'm gonna try out this thing right place and when i'm trying to figure out like yo what do i need to eat what do i need to eat right so let's see what some of y'all said <clears throat> so we can kind of figure out what i need to order because i've never been here before and we can take a quick look at it all right all right there's like 50 comments god damn y'all all right so um taylor thompson said pecan crust snapper with bread pudding for dessert i don't know if i'm a fan of bread pudding you know what i'm saying it's the texture thing i might try it i might try it everybody's telling me um let's see who else we got who else we got um roy allen said redfish louis redfish louis that stuff be good i don't know he has an accent but the way he wrote it, it makes it like you know that stuff be good i just kind of imagine he talks like that um let's see what else we got here um Chris Milando said, my favorite is the soft shell crabs. Soft shell crabs? I haven't had crabs in a while. Okay. There's a ribeye. It's pretty darn good, in my opinion. All right. Michael Gann, I see you. Um, Troy Beasley said, the redfish Louie. Okay, that's redfish Louie again. Um, let's see here. KC said, mm, the honey jalapeno shrimp. Can't eat shrimp. I'm allergic. I'm allergic to shrimp. If I eat shrimp, I will projectile vomit. It's, it is what it is. Um, Alan Hall said grilled snapper. Let's see here. Son says since you can't have shrimp, you can go with a fried soft crab. They can, you can fry crab? What? What? Hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, so many comments. So there was one that kind of like really broke it down for me. So Mr. Um, see, can you see that here? Can y'all see that? Yeah, yeah, you can't see it. Whatever. So Mr. Jason Harmon, um, he mentioned some of the other suggestions as well. And he said, wow. It's good to know that Stingray has the best reputation. Even though I don't live down there, I have eaten at Stingray at least 50 times. Goddamn, 50 times. 
you need to buy some stock. Um, it would be difficult to eat something there that is that doesn't taste good. Okay, okay. However, my taste agrees with the original post by Taylor Thompson. Pecan crust snapper in the sweet bread pudding. I would like to add the boudin balls for an appetizer. You won't be able to eat it all. So be sure to plan and take it home to share it with your wife. I ain't sharing nothing. All right, y'all, so that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with um, some kind of a con snapper with some bread pudding and some boudin bonds. Maybe get some crab soup. Let's do what it do. I haven't ate in 20 hours. I'm about to go down. Let's go. All right, there you have it, y'all. That is the end of the Bulliver Trips video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your hospitality, Bulliver. Like, the best way I can describe Bulliver, it's like a chill version of Galveston. Just laid back. It's real laid back out here, man. I really like it. So, yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, if y'all want to see a fish video of me fishing that North Jetty and going two miles out to that boat cut, I'm going to need 200 likes. I'm going to need 200 likes. Also, do me a favor, man. Comment below. What town do you want to see me go to next in my next trips video? Let me know what town I need to go check out. And yeah, just check out what you know, what y'all talking about, all right? Hope you enjoyed the video. I did. I know I enjoyed that food. Oh my God, that food was good. All right, y'all, so I'm out, I'm out. It's been real. And um, yeah, see you next week.